Hello everyone, what's up? This is my reality right now. Sitting on the floor, boxes all around me. I didn't even like set up my light for this video. I'm sitting in front of a window and it's funny because now that we moved, we have neighbors. So like the house in front of me is like watching me make this video, but whatever, it's like a front row seat to some quality content. Now, I just feel like I don't know what I wanna do right now, just in regards to literally everything, whether it's social media, whether it's like what I'm doing like day to day, my life's just like a mess. So I just was gonna sit down here and just talk about like my updated nighttime skincare routine. That's something I think about every single night, but I don't really talk about that, which sometimes it's hard to talk about my routine because I try out so many products. So my routine's never really consistent, but when I sat back and looked at it, I feel like the type of products are consistent. So we're just gonna kind of break down like what my routine really consists of, any staple products or staple ingredients that I will always have in a routine. Just kind of break it down. And really, I just wanted to hang out with somebody and I chose you. I'm literally in the middle of nowhere where I got no friends and my parents are just sitting out there watching TV. Bad TV at that. And I don't even have my TV set up yet, so I'm hanging out with you. All right, so let's get into it. I'm actually gonna do my routine along with you all. It's definitely not nighttime yet, but I put on some makeup earlier and I kind of want to take it off. So I'm just gonna do my whole routine. By the way, if ever I do that, if I want to like wash my face like midday, normally I would keep it very simple. I'm gonna do my whole routine just so I can show you on camera. But if ever I wash my face midday, I don't do the same routine like midday and then again, like right before bed, I'll keep one or the other extremely, extremely simple, like cleanser and moisturizer, and that's it. You don't want to freak your skin out by like overloading on active ingredients. That's just going to be a mess. A disaster. This is a cleansing balm I've been trying out, and I feel like I mostly like it, but there's a little thing that I don't love about it. This is the Sika Smoothing Cleansing Balm by Cosrx. It's pretty much a good cleansing balm. I don't feel like it really comes off of my skin totally. Like after I emulsify it, I do still feel a film, like it takes a lot for me to emulsify this and get it off of the skin. Well, it emulsifies really, really well, but it does just feel like it's still on the skin. Also, every single time I open this and it's not really in a place that really gets hot, it's like always kind of melty. It's just a little strange, but I do feel like this breaks everything down really, really well. Like my makeup is gone after this. I know I always preach about a double cleanse and how I always recommend you have a cleansing balm or cleansing oil in your routine, but let's ignore that for a second and just talk about the self-care aspect behind the first cleanse. Do I have a hair in my mouth? I think I do. Found it. An oil balm and a cleansing oil, it feels so good on the skin. And really it does break everything down really, really well. No matter what cleansing balm I'm using, I'm always just like, oh my gosh, it feels so good. And I always recommend you do about 60 seconds like with each cleanser. But also keep in mind, you have the most slip on your face right now that you're gonna have throughout the whole entire routine. So if you like to do little massages, go right ahead here. It might feel a little bit gross because you're doing it with like makeup and sunscreen, like broken down makeup and sunscreen on your face. So you might feel a little dirty, but you gotta slip to your skin and that's really all we need when we're wanting to massage our face. I'm gonna go emulsify and rinse this off. I'll be right back to do my cleanser. I will be right back. All right, I'm back. My face feels a little ghostly right now without that skin tint on it. My eyes also feel a little cloudy from that cleansing balm, which is kind of normal, especially when I wear contacts. I really like this cleanser, but it takes a lot for me to get like a good amount out. This is by Otzi. This is the Crystal Nova Makeup Removing Cleanser. It's pretty good. I talked about this before in a video. I do really like this cleanser, but sometimes it feels a little too drying. But it comes to a nice lather, which I really like. And right now, during the summertime, I feel like it's a perfect amount of cleanse for me and my dry skin. Can you hear that? One day I'll do an ASMR thing. I'm gonna go rinse this off because it's already getting messy. I'll be right back. All right, my skin is so, so dry. I'm just gonna go ahead and spray, and then I will talk about this product. Oh my gosh. If you have dry skin, you know the feeling. So a double cleanse for me is always, always in my routine. Whether I'm using a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm, I will always go with that two-step cleanse because I feel like really that's only the way to get all of that makeup and sunscreen off of your skin. Without being too aggressive or like stripping your skin, it's a great gentle way to really cleanse your skin. After my double cleanse, I always go in with a hydrating toner. Now, sometimes I will go in with an exfoliating toner, especially like this one by Paula's Choice. This is their BHA 2% liquid exfoliant. This is probably once a week and I'll talk about why it's only once a week. You can exfoliate like two or three times a week, but I do like BHA once a week and then AHA once a week. This is when I would apply my 2% BHA liquid from Paula's Choice as a toner step, but most days I just go in with a hydrating toner like this one from Osea. This is their Sea Minerals Mist. It feels really hydrating. I love that it has a spray to it. Really, really nice and hydration is always a must, especially for someone like me with dry skin. Then I always like to go in with something really reparative, really strengthening and hydrating. Lately, I've been going in with this Peach and Lily Glass Skin Refining Serum. This 
this is pretty much a peptide serum. It has a peptide complex to it that's really gonna strengthen the skin. Peptides are hydrating, they're really, really nice. This one's really lightweight. Soaks into the skin really, really nicely. Peach and Lily has some great products. With this step in my routine, I'm always looking for something that has like peptides, that has like ceramides or lipids in it. Something that's really reparative, sometimes niacinamide, that would go in this step as well. You'll see that I like to have a double cleanse, a hydrating toner, I have something reparative, and then I have my treatment step, which tonight we're gonna exfoliate with this lactic acid serum by Sunday Riley. This is their Good Genes. This is where I do this exfoliation or whether I would do a retinol serum like the Shawnee Darden Retinol Reform. That's the one I'm using currently. The Monday Born Serum is where I would put that in. Sometimes with this serum, it does get a little tingly. You might see my skin get like a tiny bit red, but it's nothing extreme and really chemical exfoliants, they do that sometimes. That feeling or sensation, it just shouldn't linger. You definitely don't want it to linger. I really like to pair a reparative serum like that Peach and Lily one with my exfoliants or with my retinols because I just feel like the combination of them, it really balances each other out. I still get the benefits from that retinol. I still get the benefits from those exfoliants, but I make sure to repair and really soothe the skin along with that. I'm going straight in with my moisturizer because my skin is drying. This one is by Monday Born. This one is called the 7. This one's a very nice soothing moisturizer. Nothing too, too fancy, which is what we need. Gives you hydration, gives you moisturization. It's not too heavy. It's not too thick. Really, really nice moisturizer. It's also fragrance free for anybody who needs that. You all know I don't mind fragrance necessarily, but sometimes I do just need a simple moisturizer. And this one is that it's not too simple. Like, don't get me wrong. Like this has some really, really great ingredients in it but simple meaning no exfoliants, no retinols, no vitamin C's in here. Calming, soothing, reparative ingredients, especially when paired alongside those chemical exfoliants or those retinols. This has those ceramides, it has squalene oil, it has glycerin. It also has ginseng. I really, really love ginseng. Ginseng has been used in skincare for like ever. I think ginseng is anti-inflammatory. It helps with redness, it helps with irritation, really soothes the skin. It's really reparative. I mean, ginseng is really nice. I've used a couple products with ginseng and I have enjoyed ginseng tremendously. Ginseng is one of those things where I feel like you've probably used products with ginseng in it and maybe just have overlooked it, but really look into ginseng. It's a really great product and it's included in a lot of things out there, especially in K-Beauty. Ginseng is amazing. So you probably noticed I am going to go in with an eye cream and most people use eye cream before their moisturizer. Think about it this way. An eye cream is pretty much just a moisturizer in a little tube. The only reason that I go in with my moisturizer before my eye cream is because my skin is so dry that it's just like craving that moisturizer. The eye area, it's much smaller than the face. I just want to make sure my skin's not drying out. So I quickly go in with my moisturizer and then I just follow up with the eye cream. Eye creams just feel nice too. I always have a separate product. You can use your moisturizer around your eye area. It just depends on what you like. I'm currently using the one by Dermalogica. This is the Stress Positive Eye Lift. It's just a deep puffing eye cream, helps with dark circles and skin luminosity. It's really nice. This one comes with this little applicator, which I don't use just because sometimes I feel like the product doesn't really stay on there. And sometimes I find that you're really pulling the skin and you want to be very gentle around the eye area. So I just put it on the back of my hand, use my fingers and then apply it. Sometimes I do a little massage, but you just want to make sure that you do have that slip to your skin. This is a product I use time and time again. This is the Rosehip Oil by The Inky List. I adore, adore Rosehip Oil. I always finish my routine off with an oil just because I feel like it moisturizes your skin like that much more. Oils can really soften the skin. And again, just lock in that moisture just a little bit more. It kind of works really well with your moisturizer. Rosehip Oil is also an oil that can work really well if you have acne prone skin. Rosehip oil has vitamin A properties to it so it can really help with acne scarring in a very very gentle way. It sits really really nicely on the skin. Sometimes I find that rosehip oil can be a little bit heavy so even for me and my dry skin I use it at night primarily not during the day but it's a fantastic fantastic oil. I'm actually going to go and put a little bit more just because I'm going to go in with my gua sha next. I think you all really expected a gua sha. I will use it time and time again morning and night and I just want to make sure that I do have a slip to my skin. Also, before I move any further, I am gonna go in with a lip balm because my lips are crusty. They are drying out. This one is by Laneige. It's their lip treatment balm. This one tastes so good. It's kind of like pina colada. And it comes with this really cute applicator that slides right into the top. Very, very adorable. I think I might like this one a little bit more than their OG lip mask. Those ones I feel like people either love or hate them, but this one I am super, super impressed with. Love, love, love Laneige. All of their lip products actually I'm just obsessed with. So the gua sha I'm gonna use today is the Baldona gua sha. This is one from my friend Nancy. She just launched her brand, so definitely go check it out. This one is really, really nice because of the shape of it. I feel like it really hugs the contours of your face really, really nicely. And again, I know 
I've said this before in the past, as long as you have a slip to your skin, there's really no damage you can do here. And it just feels so good. It's a great way to end your routine. I've seen some people on TikTok, they like show their 30 day transformation with gua sha. <sighs> Let's just talk about that for a moment. Gua sha can give you immediate results. Traditional gua sha from traditional Chinese medicine, they sometimes gua sha until you're pretty much bruised. I know there's another word for it, like it's not like traditional bruising. It's like flushing out your blood vessels, I think, something like that. But what we're doing here, what we're doing with most gua sha tools, even jade rollers, you're really just trying to promote lymphatic drainage, which can happen immediately. So these like 30 day transformations, I think to an extent you can kind of sculpt the face, but you can sculpt the face immediately as well. Because again, you're just improving lymphatic drainage. I mean, when you sculpt the face, you're not like moving your bone structure. What? If this stone can give you like an actual facelift, why would anybody go and get plastic surgery? It's just weird. I like to get right under the eyes and really deep puff that area. Again, it's fine. Be gentle with this area, but it's fine because you have a slip to your skin. I also saw somebody one time, they used a gua sha, not this one, like more of a traditional shaped one that kind of goes like into a heart and they use the divot right on their nose to like sculpt their nose and give them like a nose job. I don't know what kind of lymphatic like nose, like water weight you're holding in your nose area. That's weird. If you really need to like drain the lymphatic nodes in your nose, I think you gotta go to the doctor. I like to do right here for my smile lines. I also like to do my forehead area, really help with those fine lines. We're getting old over here. We need some assistance. And you can see a little bit of redness is happening, totally normal. You just don't wanna bruise yourself here because again, this is not like traditional Chinese medicine. This is just for lymphatic drainage. I like to do right here, pretend like it's really knocking out that double chin. And also the neck area, I'm gonna skip that because of that little pimple I got and just bring it up. You can go up or down here. Either way, you just wanna really massage and release that tension and it feels so good. So that is pretty much what my nighttime routine looks like. It will always include a double cleanse, a hydrating toner or that exfoliating toner. It normally includes two serums, a reparative one and a treatment one like an AHA or a retinol. On some days I do skip that treatment step, but a lot of times it really is me like listening to my skin, seeing if my skin is acting irritated, if it's sensitive that day. If ever my skin is sensitive, like I just take a break. Keep it simple, keep it reparative. Don't include those active ingredients that can irritate it further. Listen to your skin. If it's irritated, if it's sensitive, skip those treatment days. You can always take a day off and come back to it tomorrow. Retinols or chemical exfoliation, it can irritate that further. So just take a break. It's a lot more simple than people make it out to be. After those serums, I do use a moisturizer and an eye cream. Sometimes I keep those pretty simple, especially because I have those treatment steps in it. I just want something that's going to be reparative, calming, and soothing to the skin, really lock in all that moisture, and really soften the skin like those oils can really soften the skin. And you know I always include a gua sha. It's just a great way to end your routine. It really pushes that self-care aspect of skincare. In the morning when I use gua sha, it's just for deep puffing. It's just a great way to end your routine. So that's pretty much it. I hope in the next video I have my life together a little bit more. I hope I'm not on the floor. I hope I don't have boxes behind me, but we will see. Only time will tell. Thank you all so much for being here and hanging out with me. All these products as always will be listed down below along with all my socials. Before you head out, give this video a big thumbs up and make sure you subscribe and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.